But I mean, one of the things you run into, and a lot of agents do do this a lot, is they get caught up in the details of the differentiation between them, and it's confusing. And even like, well, I'll spend four hours on the phone with a client. Sometimes that's not enough time to get them to understand all of Medicare and the differentiation between them. But if you spend a lot of time on the discovery aspect and start talking to the client about what they want, what they need, what keeps them up at night, things of that nature, and then they will tell you exactly what they want their world to be after this exchange. They will tell you what they need. And then you can make the call from there. Um, what are your selected questions on that? Who am I talking to? Am I talking to someone that's low income that's going to qualify for Medicaid, or I'm talking to a Medicare supplement prospect? You tell me. All right, I prefer to talk to Medicare supplement prospects because that's where you make the most long-term revenue and you have the happiest client long-term, right. right? So if I'm talking to a Medicare supplement client and they say, they, they give you everything, they'll throw out, if you, you keep it open, they'll start talking about everything under the sun, companies they hate in the past, things they don't want to do, but then you start asking through the selector questions, which are after I figure out what you have, I'm going to find out if you have life insurance or final expense, dental, all this good stuff, your current insurance, all of that. And at the end of those questions, I start asking the, I call them selector questions. And these are the, the kind of questions that when you hear them, like if they were being asked of you, do you almost be offended? Like, you know, of, of course I want that. I'm an American for God's sakes, you know? So one of them is like, uh, so uh, do you like your doctor? Yeah, okay. Um, do you want to keep your doctor? Or do you want to run the risk of having an insurance company tell you you can't go see him anymore? Oh, of course I want to keep my doctor. I'm an American, you know, that kind of thing. And then you go through, yeah, you're right? Or, okay, so. It's like, stop I'm an American. That, the element is changing because of Obamacare. Your T65s coming in are so, especially in Texas, mm -hmm. having everything dictated for them if they were not on group health, and they're so used to having to change their doctor now every year because they go in and down there. So these new T65 people coming in, they're more, I'm finding a more, I just want to make sure I can go to a good doctor. It doesn't have to be the See, same doctor. It's not just one selector question, you keep going. Mm -hmm. So the next one is, I'm funny you brought that up, is, so if you have something happen, do you want to be able to choose your own doctor, or are you okay with an insurance company telling you to go see who's the lowest bidder? Ooh, I don't like that. Right? Or having an insurance company dictate who you go see, or tell you what to do. Mm, I don't like that loss of freedom, that lack of physical agency to go move around. I don't like that. That scares me a little. I don't want that. I want to be able to make a choice. All right. So quality of company. Do you want a company that's just the lowest premium right now? Or do you want a company that looks like it's going to have a little bit more long-term stability and premium? Are you okay with a name brand? Is that what you want? It's just a name brand? Or do you want something that's going to give you the best value? Things like that, right? And you keep going until you, you get that feeling like, all right, I got you, right? And then you go, okay, well, if you want this, 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 this is what the world you want to live in is, then it's going to be this company and this plan, and that is it, right? And then they'll go, whoa, what about those zero premium plans? Yeah, they're out there. It doesn't do all of this. And now you have just placed an order with me, and nothing else is going to fulfill that order other than what I'm saying now. Right, and that really helps out because how are you going to object to something that you just? I mean, I don't go to I don't go to McDonald's and put in an order for a burger and then go, you know what? I really this isn't a chicken sandwich. No, they go. I ordered a burger. I know I ordered a burger. I'm not going to complain. It's not chicken, right? <laughs> so it happens that way. And when you do that extra thing, you're making a connection with the person. Uh, on a personal level, because you're actually going a step further than most other people do. Most other people go, yeah, G plans are all the same, here's the price. Well, and also other go, oh, well, the deductible, it covers the Part A deductible uh, for hospitalization for 60 days for it's like $1,510 or $1,590 or whatever. Right? It keeps on going through there, and they talk about features. Those don't register with people. That doesn't register with people, right? They don't care. They, they are afraid of an excess charge, but they won't understand an excess charge until it hits them. Right. But they know that you went that extra step and talked to them personally on mm -hmm. their level about what they need and what they want and what they're afraid of happening to them. Mm -hmm. And that makes the difference. So when you go, I care about that stuff, I'm gonna do that stuff for you, I'm gonna make sure that's not gonna be a problem. You're gonna get what you want and what you need. It's gonna be this. They don't bring up any objections. It's just at that point they go, okay, how do I get that? Because mm -hmm. they usually, right after that, 
they'll they'll ask, okay, so how much does it cost, or what do I need to do to get it? And you go, hold on there. Let me read you this prepared statement because you want to build some more value in it to justify why that fits their world. So that's how I do it with subs. And then you can go through your prepared statement, and then you go through your A and B. A lot of times, I remember Brandon says the story because it is absolutely true. First year I was in, I was like, man. I gotta tell you, script doesn't work, so I was dumb. Um, and then I came through, and he's like, well, what's wrong with it? He's like, well, I never get to go through A and B, because by the time I'm done with the prepared statement, they just want to go and buy. And so, they stop me, they won't let me get all the way through. Right. They, just, they stop me to buy internally. Oh, okay. So, um, so the trick on that, the trick on that, and uh, it was Jack Adams and I who were working every day back in 2007, 8, 9, uh, and it was, I mean, a continuation of what we did face to face, but like, how do you look someone in the eye over the phone kind of thing is, is what it was. But you turn the, once you get past a certain point where you've done the proper discovery and you're starting to make a recommendation, the idea is to eliminate options so you get to one and only one option that you're, you're presenting. And so when you go through A and B and you go through how the supplement fits like a can to lock into it and all of this, what you're doing is you're actually you're making a presentation of their new policy, right? Of their new policy, so it's not really a presentation where you're hoping for a decision at the end. You've gotten it to a point where it's an orientation into their new policy. Something, right? Right, and so it's basically, and we would actually, if you look at the script, it goes in and it starts saying the Mutual of Omaha Plan G covers this. The Mutual of Omaha Plan G will cover that and you will pay zero. Your new Mutual of Omaha Plan G, and throughout the conversation it starts giving more and more ownership. It just kind of slides it in by at the end. Uh, it has gone into, uh, let me offer this to you to uh, let me orient you into your new policy and show you everything that you're going to expect to happen from here. Uh, and it just, it just slides right in. And, then, and Frank's added this selector question thing at the beginning as a, as a new way uh, with all the challenges that come in um, to get them to just, like I say, make that order. Uh, and what that does is inoculates them to everything else. So Joe Name is going to going to sh show something else. They're going to go. I know that's a, that's the McRib. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's right. The McRib. It doesn't exist. Well, <laughs> if you can get someone to say something, it's a hundred more, hundred times more valuable than you say. Mm -hmm. Right. And so what also is happening is, you know, instead of asking questions, who do you have? What? How much you paying for? It, what? What are you doing right now? Well, they know what you're doing. Yeah. When you're doing it, you start asking, what do you want? What? Do, what are your dreams? All this. It gets them talking. Mm -hmm. And if they get to talking, then they're gonna also. They're not gonna have a very focused conversation of, I only want this because I researched that and that. Yes. They're gonna talk about, well, my sister did this and da da da. They're gonna tell their story. Now all of a sudden, there's opening up. There's human interaction. There's connection. There's things that you're going to realize that are important to them that aren't, you know, that you didn't know before, and it's open up a conversation. You always open up a conversation with questions, mm -hmm. open-ended questions. Right. Right. I think some of the people we talked to didn't really even know what they wanted until they start talking to us, mm -hmm. right. and we're asking the questions, and they're like, "Oh yeah, no, I want to keep my doctor because I love him or whatever," and they didn't even really think that was even a something they ever needed to talk about or think about until we start asking the questions. Because no one's... Them identify what it is, what am I looking for? Right, because no one's forced them to articulate it. And when you say something verbally, you're manifesting that. That's It's come out of your mouth and you just heard it and went, oh, that does matter to me. 